This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the thecreativedojo.net. Today I'm happy to announce an update to one of my oldest tools, Dojo Glitch. This tool is actually on version three now. It's been through a lot of iterations, a lot of updates. And with version three, it's been pretty much rewritten from the ground up to really improve the algorithm to give you more natural, chaotic, random glitches. So for those of you guys who are not aware of Dojo Glitch, basically it is a name your own price script for After Effects available at creativedojo.net where it helps you pretty much simulate really nice realistic glitches, chromatic aberrations, artifacting, um, all that great stuff, randomized glitches for mock UI, sci-fis, titles, um, really nice transitions. Basically, it's a pretty cool tool. It's not a full-on replacement for plugins, but it is a nice little native way of doing it quickly with an After Effects script. So here I have a demo comp right here. I have a text layer that kind of just animates on randomly using the glitch text transition tutorial. Links in the video description down below. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and just move it forward. And this is just gonna show you kind of the initial results with the new version three glitch right here. I'm gonna call this tutorial. So we have this nice, simple transition right here. And we're gonna select both layers and hit glitch. And so it's gonna give you a little prompt and you're gonna see right off the bat that this version three is a lot better than version one, version two. Older users will really appreciate this right here. And right off the bat, you're gonna see that we get this really nice kind of glitchy, um, chaotic kind of a look here. It's more toned down, conservative uh, with the default settings. And so this is just an example right here. So once you install it in the Scripts UI folder, you can go to window and can open the new tool right here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo everything here and just focus on one text layer at a time. Just to kind of show you some of the new features right here. So let's go ahead and reapply Dojo Glitch to this text layer right here. And you don't need to do this with text layers only. This works with pretty much anything in After Effects, whether it's videos, photos, anything you want right here. So go and select your layer, go ahead and hit glitch, and it's going to apply this kind of like glitchy effect right here. And the magic happens with the glitch controller layer, null object right here. So the first setting is glitch intensity. This is pretty obvious. So whenever this thing does glitch, the glitch intensity controls how much it moves in position. And this is a key distinction between version two and version one. In those versions, pretty much things are glitching all the time and you're controlling the amount. Now we have a new property here called glitch probability. This is new. So we're no longer just, you know, wiggling things um, every X amount of seconds for this amount. Now we have something called probability. And by default set to five, if we crank this up to 15, then um, there's a 15% chance per frame that this thing's gonna glitch around. And as you can see, it's pretty much glitching around a lot right now. And no longer are you getting that kind of nasty, like linear, smooth wiggling effect. Now we're getting true randomized glitches and it just completely just shifts positions and really gives you a more chaotic, more realistic punch to the glitch right here. And so this is kind of what you're getting right here with a 15% glitch probability. I'm gonna turn it down to 300. The next is the artifact intensity. So if I kind of just scrub through to find the artifact right here, this is kind of like the artifacting where it kind of just distorts your images into these really nice randomized digital blocks, right? And if we increase the intensity, we're really gonna distort this thing and really get some crazy artifacting in our text. It's really, it's really gonna just j jumble it all up, kind of like compression right here, just like this. So already it's looking a lot better than version two. And next we have a dedicated control for chromatic aberration. Before in the past, you can kind of create it, but things are still kind of moving and whatnot. With the new chromatic aberration feature, you can actually just crank this up and you're gonna get this really nice RGB split. This is very easy and very fast to do. And right off the bat, we get this. So now you can actually create chromatic aberration without even creating any glitches or anything like that. So it's a very nice way to create this chromatic aberration if you're going for that more realistic stuff. Really great for 3D renders if you wanna make them look a little bit more realistic through optics. And so this chromatic aberration just overall just kind of splits everything up. That is different from RGB separation. So RGB separation is the amount of RGB split when things do glitch. And again, I'm saying that purposely because it's different from version two. So basically, whenever this thing does split, how much is it gonna split? So this is a glitch right here. If we increase RGB separation, you're gonna see that it kind of just splits it up even more. And, but this setting only applies to when it actually does glitch. So right here, 
when there's no glitch, this slider doesn't really mean anything. It only applies whenever we're actually glitching, like right here. So something to keep in mind. We also have the lens distortion effect. This is similar to version two. You'll see it better if you apply it to a larger image, um, but we do have some nice lens distortion effects right there for you guys. Um, the glitch settings, pretty much the same glitch X intensity. So we can control how much glitch we're getting um, on the X axis and the Y axis. We also have the glitch frequency, which can be a little bit confusing compared to probability. But the best way I can explain it is that whenever we are glitching, the 15% of the time that we are glitching, this is how frequent this thing's gonna be moving around. So you're gonna have to play with the probability, which is chances of it's gonna be moving per frame. And then when it is moving, how fast we're moving. So this is kind of like the glitch frequency right here. And this plays with the glitch intensity as well by how much are we moving. Um, so just something to think about. So that is the glitch settings. Artifact setting, this is something that I, that I really wanted to improve from version two. I was just not happy with the way it looked. Um, so now version two, three has a lot better improved um, artifacting right here. So just like the glitch setting, we actually have the artifact probability set to 15% by default. If you want it to kind of um, artifact even more, crank this up to like 50% and you're gonna see it kind of like artifact all the time right here. And so we have similar settings right here. This the artifact scale will control how small the scale of the artifacts are overall. If you wanna control things per X and Y axis, you have the artifact width and height, similar to version two. And of course, the how much displacement you want. So we can actually displace it even more. We can displace it in a wide direction as well if you wanted to. I tend to displace things in the X axis. Um, a new setting right here is artifact detail. So right now, this is kind of like a, you know, a not very detailed artifact. It's kind of like blocky, but it's not too detailed, not too contrasty. Um, if we, this is a new feature. If we crank up the artifact detail, you're gonna see that we get a lot more variation in kind of the artifact that we get. And what this does is it actually affects the mat. So we get more variation in blocks and uh, more variation in um, how this thing affects everything overall. So just play around with the artifact detail. This is a very, very critical new feature that can really improve the look of your artifact right here. Of course, we have the artifact speed, which control how fast the, the artifacts kind of animate whenever we do get artifacting. And then we have warp pixels around, which can be useful if you have some confining boxes, depending on what your source layer is. And lastly, we have the flicker settings. This is pretty much kind of unchanged from version two except we now also have the flicker probability, which is always nice. And now the flicker settings is not gonna be using opacity more, it's gonna be using an effect called exposure. So it's gonna be truly um, brighten or darken your image rather than playing around with the opacity and getting these weird like opacity overlays with your backgrounds. Now this utility section right here is not something that you wanna play around with. This is kind of for the tool to kind of randomize everything using this random seed. So this random seed is not editable. This is really just for the tool to kind of use this slider right here to kind of control everything. So you can safely ignore the utility section right there. But overall with these settings, the algorithm has been improved drastically to create more realistic glitches. Things are gonna look a lot more chaotic, a lot more random, a lot more natural in terms of glitches compared to the more wiggly based type algorithm that we use for version one and version two. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this method. So definitely play around with it here. And lastly, just kind of demonstrate the whole lens distortion effect right here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in this comp right here into a new comp. I'm going to select my comp and apply Dojo Glitch to this whole entire composition right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to the controller layer and increase the lens distortion. And if you look at the grid in the back, right, you kind of see what it's doing here. It's going to pretty much give you a really nice distortion, uh, which can be good for photos, videos, and larger elements right here. But overall, this is kind of like an overview of the Dojo Glitch version three. And basically it's a name your own price tool, which you can get over at creativedojo.net. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for a store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website.
So that's pretty much it for Dojo Glitch version three, guys. Hopefully you guys like it. If you guys experience any bugs or any issues, or you have any feature requests that you want to make or any changes, I'll be sure to get to them as soon as I can. If you create anything cool with Dojo Glitch, I would love to see it. So feel free to tag me on Twitter or Instagram. And if you guys like the tool, feel free to buy me a cup of coffee or something like that. As always, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more video tutorials like these and more products like these. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.